Greetings in the name of the Lord. I am Brother Patrick Mutindamwanya, OSA, Kenya. The ignorance of the scripture is the ignorance of Christ. A famous quotation from St. Jerome, a father of the church, who translated the Bible from Greek to Latin. Welcome to my today's reflection about the mystics in the Bible. The Bible is considered to have two authorships, the sacred authorship, which is the divine, and the human authorship. The human authorship is considered to be imperfect, while the sacred or the divine authorship is considered to be perfect. But Saint Augustine once said, if he ever ran across an apparent error in the Bible, he will conclude three things. That one, the translator of the sacred text made a mistake when he translated the original Hebrew or Greek text into the vernacular languages. Secondly, the person who copied the manuscript from the original made a mistake. And thirdly, he as the reader is misinterpreting the text and is not using the author's intended meaning. Augustine could, not, could never accept the premise that the Bible had any mistakes. And this idea of the Bible not having mistakes is known as inerrancy. No one denies that there is some difficulty in the biblical text, original written in Hebrew and Greek. The Old and the New Testaments were copied by hand. Most inconsistencies and irregularities in the Bible are human errors and not from the original sacred authors. But human translators who had hand copied them from the original or from the copies misspelled words and wrong numbers can be found in many manuscripts. Today, computers run spell checks, but then you had, no, you, you had to use a human editor. These copied texts were then translated into various languages, such as Latin, English, Swahili, and even our local languages. Only the original manuscript written by the sacred author, which is called the autograph by the biblical scholars, is guaranteed to be inherent, infallible, and inspired. Unfortunately, there are no surviving originals. Papyrus was used back then and it was more venerable to climatic change than the today's paper. But the historians and theologians are considered, are, cons are convinced that, however, that our modern translations and versions of the Bible are pretty close to the original. Ancient Hebrew had no comparatives or the superlative as we do in English, and so we can say good, better, and best. So they used hyperbole to make a point, and it was intended to be in, not, not to be interpreted literally. For example, Jesus said in the gospel, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father, mother, children, brother, and sister, or even his own life cannot be my disciple. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. 26. If literally interpreted, a Christian could have to hate his mother and father. Yet the commandments say, we must honor them. Without a comparative, therefore, ancient Hebrew could not say what you can say in English, that is, to love more than. So it had to make an almost absurd exaggeration. Matthew chapter 10, verse 37, uses the Greek, Greek concept when it says, who, He who loves the father 
and mother more than me is not worthy of me. When you compare both passages, you see that the proper way to understand hate in Luke chapter 14 verse 26 is to love le- is to love less than rather than to harbor animosity. Thank you and God bless you.